Hello everyone and welcome to our channel Physiosaurus. In today's video, I'll be talking about Bell's palsy or facial palsy. So basically, Bell's palsy happens when there is upper motor neuron lesion or it can be due to the lower motor neuron lesion. But there are certain differences in the upper motor neuron facial palsy and the lower motor neuron facial palsy. So what are the differences? So basically, I have written four or five points here. Uh, describing the differences between the upper motor neuron facial palsy and lower motor neuron facial palsy. So, when upper motor neuron facial palsy occurs, there is the facial palsy in the lower half quadrant of the face. But in the lower motor neuron facial palsy, there is pa uh, facial paralysis in the full half side of the face, either to totally half or either totally left. Okay. Now, upper motor uh, in the upper motor neuron facial palsy the fibers gets innervation or the facial muscles get innervation from the both hemisphere of the cerebrum that is left and right but in the lower motor neuron facial palsy the innervation is from the opposite cerebellar hemisphere now what are the differences more differences so basically the patients with the upper motor neuron facial palsy can raise their eyebrows but in the lower motor neuron uh, cases patient can't raise their eyebrows because one side there is the total paralysis in one side of the face. Now again, patient would be unable to smile or unable to whistle and in the lower motor neuron lesion, the symptoms such as dropping of mouth, loss of nasolabial fold and the inability to close eyelid. These are the symptoms you would be seeing in the lower motor neuron facial palsy cases. Now let's talk about uh, more differences between upper motor, uh, motor neuron lesion and lower motor neuron lesion facial palsy. See, there, is, there will be a detailed video on the differences between upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron Bell's palsy which I will be not discussing right now in this video because this video is about the medicinal part okay, of the facial palsy. Now what are the differences? So if the forehead is not affected, that is if the patient is able to fully raise the eyebrow on the affected side then the facial paralysis is likely to be upper motor neuron lesion. but if there is paralysis which includes the forehead such as the patient is unable to raise their affected eyebrow then it would be a lower motor neuron lesion case. So now let's move on to the facial palsy which is due to the lower motor neuron lesion. Let's talk about some of its introduction. So facial palsy happens when there is inflammation in the 7th cranial nerve which is known as facial nerve. Facial nerve originates from the basal ganglia and innervates in the fallopian canal of the middle ear and in the facial muscles. So this I am not talking about course and relation. This is the basic overall course and relation about the facial nerve. Course and relation of the facial nerve is very huge, which I will not be discussing in this video. Now, what does facial nerve do? So facial nerve helps in the voluntary control of the facial organs such as eyeball movement, eyelid movement, movement of lip and tongue and external auditory meters. Now let's talk about the causes of the lower motor neuron facial palsy. So there are eight or nine causes of the lower motor neuron facial palsy such as herpes simplex virus. Now these are the virus which are present in the cold exposure. So patient is advised to not expose their body in very cold. Now what are the etiology? So herpes simplex virus, mumps virus, influenza virus, prolonged middle ear infection which is rare actually, trauma, rubella, flu, Epstein-Barr virus and cytomegalovirus. Also the predisposing factors here uh, one point is sorry here one point i have left etiology can be idiopathic too okay now let's talk about its predisposing factors or the risk factors so there are five predisposing factors such as weak immunity cold exposure diabetes upper respiratory infection high blood pressure now let's talk about its clinical features or the symptoms so weakness of the facial muscles, dropping of eyelid, incomplete closure of eyes, teary discharge, reduced movement of eyeball, facial drop due to the weakness of facial muscles, incomplete closure of lip, loss of taste because facial palsy is also involved in the taste sensation. Okay. Now pain around the jaw or behind the ears, drooling and pain. Now let's talk about its complications. So there could be permanent damage of facial neuron, brain infection, loss of taste, smell and hearing and the eye infection. Let's talk about its investigation too. 
so physical examination is the most common examination okay which is done on the patient on the basis of their symptoms also you can do elisa test for herpes simplex virus ct scan and mri okay now there are few advices which are given to the patient suffering from the lower motor neuron facial palsy such as gargling chewing gums for the uh, mastication movement okay Up, avoid cold exposure and apply hot packs over the area now we will talk about the physiotherapy management so first is modality such as muscle stimulator is given to the patient and we prefer the galvanic current because of the low frequency now self massages are uh, generally prescribed for the patient breathing and relaxation exercises are performed on the patient there are certain exercises which are done to enhance coordination between the both sides of the face and to reduce the synkinesis also exercises are done to help with eye and lip closure later word and facial expression exercises are also performed on the patient spirometer exercises are performed mirror biofeedback is a very important pt management in this cases also there are some certain techniques such as facial pnf exercise is performed on the patient along with that active movement of the facial muscle is very much necessary such as opening and closing of eyelid lip movement so these are the active movement which are performed by the patient so this is where the video ends i am very sure you like this video so much so thank you so much for watching this video the next video will be most probably on the differences between upper motor neuron facial palsy and the lower motor neuron facial palsy